All right, good morning, everyone. And good morning to our students online as well. All right, so let's begin this time with a word of prayer, and then we'll get into our class. Father, we thank you for this time. And Lord, even as we study your word, Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit will minister to us and we will know who we are in you, our identity, our authority. And Lord, we pray that you will, Lord, enable each one of us to walk in this identity, to walk in this power that you have placed upon each of our lives, oh God. We thank you, Lord. We pray that our hearts will be ready and grounded in your word. The seeds that are sown in our heart will bear fruit in our lives, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So last week or last class, we talked about uh, chapter, we did quite a few chapters. We did chapter 10, uh, 11, and 12, if I'm not wrong, right? 10, 11, and 12, uh, we did, uh, we talked about how we are in Christ, not because of anything that we have done but it is because of what Jesus did for us. So it's not a work that we have to do, but Jesus himself did it for us. And we also saw that we are created in Christ, meaning when uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, when anyone is in Christ, it's a new creation. So this creation is not like Jesus is taking something old and making it new, but he's giving us life eternal. He's giving us a new spirit. So what the old spirit was there our old spirit the spirit that was always you know desiring the things of the flesh is gone away and now the new spirit the spirit of god that god puts into us desires the things of the spirit right so let's pick up from uh, chapter 13 and again i as i always say if you have questions in between feel free to stop me and uh, those online as well you can feel free to post your questions you can also unmute and ask your questions all right let's go to chapter three god's holy spirit baptized us into christ now let's look at this word baptized right uh there are two kinds of baptism and we'll learn more about it later on as well what are the two kinds of baptisms Water baptism and Holy Spirit baptism. Very good, right? Very good. So there's the water baptism and the Holy Spirit baptism, right? Now, God's Holy Spirit baptized us into Christ, right? Let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 13. Go ahead. For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one spirit. Yeah. Now, again, this, the book of Corinthians is written, you know, a good student of God's word will always understand the context of scripture. Why is Paul writing this? Because we know that in Corinth, there was divisions among the believers. Now, Paul is saying, whether you are a Jew, whether you are a Gentile, whether you are a free, whether you are a slave, whoever you are, we are baptized into one body. And we have all made to drink that one spirit. Right? So, whether whichever background we are from, it is the same Holy Spirit that is working. It is the same Holy Spirit that regenerated us. So, for example, we are making the prayer. We are saying, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Make me a new person. I want to give. I want to let go of all my sins. I want to live a good life. I want to live a life holy. And I want to please you. I want to obey your word. The moment we accept the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit does the regeneration inside us. Right? Now, who is that Holy Spirit? It is the same, the third person in the Trinity, right? So this Holy Spirit does not change. It is not like, you know, God is going to say, oh, this person is a rich man, so we'll send a greater Holy Spirit, and this person is, okay, or this person is going to become a great evangelist or a great 
uh, apostle of God, so we'll send him a better Holy Spirit. No. It is the same Holy Spirit that does the regeneration. Are you getting what I'm saying? Right? So all of us in this entire world, whoever are believers, it is the same Holy Spirit that has done the regeneration. Now we must understand, when the Lord Jesus looks at us as believers, he does not see Methodist, Pentecost, Baptist, you know, believer church, unbeliever church. He doesn't see all that. When the Lord Jesus sees us, he sees us as one body. Right? Everyone say one body. One body. Right? He doesn't see denominations. He doesn't see caste, religion, language. He doesn't see the way we worship God. No, these church worship was very good. This church worship is too much of sound. No, he's not going to say see all that. When the Lord Jesus sees us, he sees us as one body. Why does he see us like that? Because we are all brought into one spirit. We come into Christ through one spirit. Right? Now, in the natural, there may be different styles, different, you know, what works in villages and towns. The worship is different. And in the city, it's different. Preaching in the city is different. Preaching in villages are different. Right? But when the Lord Jesus sees us, we have one body. We all are going to stand in one ground, level ground. Okay? I've said this before. We can be a great evangelist or we can just be a believer for one year. When the Lord Jesus sees us, he sees both of us the same. Nobody's higher, nobody's greater. But the rewards are different. When he looks at us, we are one body. He's not going to look at this and that. No, that is man-made. Here we will see, right? Oh, you're Methodist, you're Pentecost, you're Baptist, you're Presbyterian, you are this, you're that. But when the Lord Jesus sees, it's one body. Bought by the blood of Jesus. Jesus doesn't want to complicate things. And we, we complicate it. But when Jesus sees it, it's one body. You, you, you accepted Jesus as your personal savior. You're washed by the blood of Jesus. That's it. Your identity is changed. You're baptized into the body of Christ. Now, after that, we begin to learn. We begin to understand. We begin to grow. There are some things we'll have to undo. There are some things we'll have to learn to do. Right? And so when we see this, he, the, the, when we say baptize, what is the first thing that comes to our mind? When, when we say baptize, sorry? Immersed? Yes. Right? Water baptism. All of you are uh, water baptized? Most of you all at least? Yeah? What did the pastor do? Baptism. Did he take water and pour on your face? What did he do? Did he take water bottle and pour water on your head? But he immersed you fully. He made sure that you're into the water and you've come out. That is the word called baptis baptism. It's called baptismo, to immerse fully. Right Now, when you and I are become believers, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, we are baptized, we are immersed into his body. We are ba baptized into Christ. And who does that? The, the Holy Spirit. Right? He took us and he immersed us into the body of Christ. That is, he brought us into union with Christ. We were separated, but now after we become believers, the Holy Spirit brought us into union with Christ. So that means what? That's why, we, let's read this portion. Uh, in the book of Romans, let me just look, find that portion. Romans. Paul is writing to the Romans and he's explaining to them about being baptized.
Yeah, Romans chapter 5, or no, Romans chapter 6. I'm just going to read a few portions here, right? Uh, verse 2 onwards. Uh, we died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know that all of us were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead, through the glory of the Father, we too may have a new life. So when, when, when we hear, he's talking about water baptism, right? When we are water baptized, we identify with the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, here we're talking about how when the Lord Jesus, when we become believers, Jesus brings us in union. And through that spirit, you and I can call him Abba Father. In the Old Testament, is there any place where the Jews have called God the Father, Father? Is there a place where they called him Father? In the Old Covenant? Why? Because there was a separation. Right. He was always Jehovah, Jehovah, the Lord of hosts, El Shaddai, the God of Israel. You know, history says that, you know, when, when the scribes, you know, scribes, right? They would write the scriptures, the law, they would write it down. Every time the word Jehovah comes, they will stop. They'll go, they'll wash their hands, they'll wash their face. They'll clean themselves and write that word Jehovah. There was so much of honor and reverence because that is God, the God of Moses, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. We can't call him father. He's God. Now, many years later, Jesus, what is he saying? The disciples are saying, teach us how to pray. We don't know how to pray. Teach us to pray. What does Jesus say? What does he say? Our Father. Now the beginning, see, when we read it, no, we may not understand. Our Father. But for the Jews, our Father. You're, Jesus, you're saying that God of Abraham, Isaac, you're saying he's your Father. Now a father and son relationship is how? It's a loving relationship. It's a close relationship. Right? It's a, it's a oneness. Now, Jesus is teaching us this. I'm saying, when you pray, pray our Father who art in heaven. Now the disciples would have thought, no, no, no. They're talking about God. Jesus is saying, yes. Why? Because if you go on later on, let's read this. Uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 15. Right? I'm going to read this. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received a spirit of sonship, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. So Jesus was giving them some practice. You practice praying this way, because there will come a time, the Holy Spirit will work in your life, and because of the Holy Spirit, you'll no longer fear God. You'll not be scared about God, you'll not fear him, but there will be, a, 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 a sonship, spirit of sonship. And with that spirit, you can call him Abba Father. So when you and I, as believers, accept the Lord, what does the Lord Jesus do? He immerses us, he submerges us into union with him. So the question is now, are we in union with him? Yes or no? Are we immersed with him? Are we with Christ right now? Yes. Now, we may feel we are not with Christ. Right? And remember, the gospel is not about feeling. Is it about feeling? The gospel, the message of Jesus is not about feeling. It's about faith. Right? Now, I may not have prayed. I may not have spent time in the word of God. No, I feel I'm very far away from God. 
and i feel oh if i go pray now god will ask me why i didn't pray you know so many months over you didn't pray you did so many sins why did you do this so we stay away but that's not what the bible says when we are believers that moment the holy spirit brings us in union with christ that will not change right if you look at scriptures everywhere jesus said hey i'll never leave you i'll never forsake you the book of isaiah he says as far as the east is from the west i have forgotten your transgression the problem is we try to remind god god actually 3 months i didn't pray god is saying, i'm not asking you that did i ask you i'm i'm looking at what you can be ahead i'm not looking at what you have done before but i'm looking at what you can do ahead imagine the disciples jesus is crucified 3 and 1/2 years he was with the disciples have been with jesus nobody is there when he meets peter after jesus is resurrection he meets the apostle peter what does peter say oh he didn't he 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 rushed to jesus he he jumped out of the boat he went to jesus what did jesus say sit down let me talk to you did he say that did jesus say now when i was carrying the cross where were you then i was they first they beat me up nicely you were not there then i carried the cross you were not there then i went up to the cross you know i'm going to die you know that i've told you this before but i went on the mountain they put, they crucified me still you were not there i was crying in pain and bitterness taking the whole sins of the world the least i expect is you to be there you were not there peter what is this Did Jesus say that? What did Jesus say? Peter, are you ready to take the ministry ahead? Did Jesus look at what he didn't do, or did Jesus look at what he can do? Jesus looked at what he can do. We, when we look at Peter, he's a normal fisherman. He's good at catching fish. But when Jesus looks at Peter, he's going to be the leader of the church. in the natural when people look at us oh i'm just from the village or i'm just you know i don't know uh, anything in media i don't know any instrument i don't know how to sing i don't understand how to read the word of god i don't do this i don't know this we may have many thoughts that way but when jesus sees us what does he see he says hey this is what i have a plan for you bigger plan this is what i want you to do because there's, there's hard work there's dedication there's uh practice there's reading all of that we have to do but that's the plan that god has so you and i are in union with christ don't let the devil make you feel that you're unworthy he will make you feel that way but don't let him make you feel he'll say ah oh, you didn't pray today you didn't read the word that's why you fell into temptation that is true that may be true but it does not change this identity that when the holy spirit comes inside us we are in union with christ as i paul writes in corinthians he says do not grieve the holy spirit with whom you have been marked do not make the holy spirit sad he is there talk to him speak to him nowadays everyone put those earphones no you don't know who they're talking to so no problem you also can keep talking so many times many many times i'll be walking i'll be driving riding just doing something i'll be i'll be talking to the holy spirit holy spirit today this is what i want to do this is i'm feeling very weak today holy spirit this is what i you know i was reading today's word it said like this i didn't understand can you tell me what it is or if i have to make decisions for the church it's very important decisions holy spirit what should i do should i wait should i do it now speak to the holy spirit and he will speak back he will minister to us right that that's that's why he is there he is not there just for us to say okay i am with one badge i have the holy spirit inside me 
That is not the point. The point is he wants to minister to us. And you'll learn more in the Holy Spirit class. Okay? So let's go to the next chapter. When we become believers, spiritually, we are one with Jesus. 1 Corinthians 6, 17. Let's read that. First Corinthians six seventeen. All is one spirit with him. Let's read that again. Uh, it's not clear enough. Go ahead, Gertrude. But he, uh, but he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Yeah, thank you. So he who is joined with the Lord is one spirit with him. Okay, how many of you are joined with the Lord? Some of you aren't joined with the Lord. We're all joined with the Lord. So we have one spirit with him. Yes. Is the spirit of Jesus with, with you? Yes. Is Jesus here? Yes. Is he inside us? Yes. So we have one spirit with him. Now, when we have one spirit with him, now in the natural, nobody know, nobody can see it. But in the spiritual, Jesus is with us. If you look at the New Testament and we read all through the scriptures, we see that the Holy Spirit is referred to many names. The Spirit of Truth, the Spirit of Jesus, the Spirit of Conviction, right? So many names, but they're all one person, one spirit, right? When as new creations, our spirits are united with him, Spiritually, we are connected with him and we are one with him. So right now, we are connected to Jesus. Right? Imagine Jesus inside us, speaking to us. The same Jesus that we are reading about, we are connected to him. Right? We, have, we use this word, no, oh, I have many connections around. <laughs> you know, I know many people have many connections. How? One call, you'll get the work done. So here also one call to Jesus. Jesus, this is the problem. Or this is what I'm facing. He's there. You're connected to him. And he is connected to you. The problem is if I have if I have a problem and I don't ask him, and I'm trying to ask everybody else other than Jesus, what happens? Jesus is gonna keep quiet. Okay, when is he going to ask me? He's asking everybody else, he's not asking me. He's asking all his other connections, but he's not asking me, right? So we, we must understand that, you know, many times believers and people, they come and ask us as pastors, they ask us, you know, why am I not able to, why am I not able to, uh, you know, spend more time in God's word? Why am I not able to pray? Genuine questions. The thing is, our mind and our 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 life is, Towards the things of this world. I, now I'm not saying that we should not work. It's very important to work, look after family, but we must always stay connected with him. What does John say? Abide in me. Stay in me. And then you will bear fruit. Right? When we abide in him and we're connected to him, we become spiritually one with him. So when we are one with him, praying, Worship, reading God's word, it's not a task. It doesn't become a task. Now, how many of you, you know, you have brothers and sisters and you really love your brothers and sisters or your cousins, all of it, and you all have a get together? You have those, you know, a program or a get together. Will you be tired of talking to your cousins? We'll keep talking. You know what happened? This happened. You know what happened? That happened. Continuously you'll talk. One hour, two hours, two days, three days. There are things to talk. Why? Because you all, you all are so connected to each other, right? You all are cousins, you all are your brothers and sisters. You love each other. But when it's God, it's different. Why? Because we, we are losing the connection. Jesus is there. So when we are passionate, we know that Jesus is, you know, we are passionate about and we love them, love the Lord Jesus. 
prayer, worship, reading God's word will not be a task. It will not be a task. So initially, remember, you know, they used to say, wake up at 5 a.m. and pray. And all of them used to be, oh man, not 5 o'clock in the morning. Who's going to wake up at 5? True. Naturally, you don't want to wake up. But if you think of it, for me, it was like, me and a few other of my classmates, some of the guys, hey, five o'clock, we can start talking to God. And I can speak to Jesus. He's there with me. So I would be waiting. So from five o'clock, we moved the prayer to 4 a.m. That was not enough. From 4 a.m. to 3 a.m. So me and my, a couple of friends, so my friends, two of them and me, so 3 a.m. we used to wake up. And we used to pray. Students, we used to pray and pray. Three, four, five o'clock, then all the other students will get up for prayer. We would have finished prayer. we will be fully ready. Five, then five to six, we'll pray, get ready, come to Bible college. And then go through the whole day, whole class, again do the same thing. We did that for two years straight. Right. Now, is it a task? Oh, what to do? What is this 5 a.m. rule? Somehow, if it's a, it's a task, when we don't enjoy being in God's presence. But if we enjoy something, it's not a task. So we are in union with Him. Right? This morning, last night, I said to myself, Oh, I'm too tired. Not going to wake up for prayer. Well, let me just get up at, you know, a little later and pray. It's okay. You know, it's okay to do those every now, once in a while. It's okay to, it's important to get rest. So I said, okay, I'll, I'll rest. You know, you know, we keep using the laptop. We keep meeting people, hearing people, uh, people's problems, difficulties. And uh, there's so much that happens in ministry, right? Uh, things to do in the church. Uh, and, and so much of preparation to be done. So I said, okay, I'm going to rest. I said, I'm going to get up at 7 o'clock in the morning. And then I'll pray and then I'll get ready and I'll come. So I, I said, uh, so I, I, I told myself, I'm not going to wake up early. Let me get some good rest. I opened my eyes. It's 2.45 a.m. What to do? 3 o'clock? Because 2.45 I got up, I said, okay, let me try and sleep again. But then Jesus is waiting. Okay, pray. It's, it becomes a passion. It becomes a desire. It's no more about, you know, it's no more about, oh, man, I don't want to do this. No, it's you know, one with him. And you'll want to know more of him. You'll desire more of him. And it'll, it'll just be an outflow. When you begin to, you know, preach and teach and lead the worship, it's an outflow of His Spirit. He will begin to move. His anointing will touch people's lives. Why? Because you spend time in His presence. Can right? I have a question? Let's read. Yes, go ahead, Gertrude. Pastor, you know, when Jesus was uh, resurrected, He said, I'm going to be with the Father and I will send the Spirit with you, will be your counselor. Now they say that we have to pray in the Spirit uh, to the Holy Spirit. But that means we have to pray through the Holy Spirit to Jesus and our Father together. Okay, so it's, it's not like that, Gertrude. You will learn more in prayer and intercession, but let me just answer your question. So the Holy Spirit is inside us. And the Holy Spirit, when when we are praying in tongues, we are praying in an unknown tongue. We are speaking the mysteries of God, right? So it is our spirit speaking to God, right? And and it's not like we have to pray to the Father one way, to the Spirit, Holy, to Jesus one way, to the Spirit one way. No, see, they all three are one, but they have different essence. Yes. Right. So the Holy Spirit is there with us right now. Jesus yes. is there with us. Of course, we know that Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father, but the Holy Spirit is also the Spirit of Jesus. It's the same person. 
right so you can pray to the father you can pray to the son you can pray to the holy spirit you can mix it up you can you can pray right uh, we don't have to worry about okay this prayer point should go to the father this prayer point goes it, it's not that way right so you can see the holy spirit sometimes you know the holy spirit will help us to pray we don't want to pray we we cannot pray or we are tired we are weary the holy spirit helps us to pray he puts words he reminds us of things that we can pray about right it need not be only speaking in tongues but he can he can remind us he can say hey you pray for this person or you pray for this uh, city pray for this nation pray for this church right so the point is prayer is to one person that is to god and who is god it's one god three in a sense yes. right so yeah thank you thank you pastor most welcome yeah uh, and there are many facets to prayer you'll learn more on that in the in the next semester as well all right let's read first corinthians chapter 6 13 15 19 and 20 let's go ahead now the body is for the lord and the lord for the body it's just a little louder no so that they can hear do you not know that your bodies are members of christ or do you not know that your body is the temple of the holy spirit who is in you whom you have from god and you are not your own for you were bought at a price therefore glorify god in your body and in your spirit which are god's mm. so this is a powerful verse what is paul saying now the body is for the lord and the lord is for the body do you not know that your bodies are members of christ right when we become believers we are in union with christ we are members of christ verse 19 very important or do you not know that your body is the temple of the holy spirit now paul is using an uh, you know he's using a typology here typology means like he's in the old testament there was a temple you got the outer courts inner courts most holy place and the most holy place was the presence of god where there were you know his presence would stay now jesus is uh, paul is saying your body is that temple the temple of the holy spirit the holy spirit is there inside right who is in you whom you have from god and you are not of your own this body physical body god has given us but it is not on our own, not of our own why because the holy spirit is seated inside we are the temple of the holy spirit verse 20 for you were bought at a price therefore glorify god in your body your spirit so when we become believers when we become one with christ every part of us becomes one with him so i've said this before right we have a body in our body we have a spirit the spirit has a soul right so for example the soul is our mind our will our emotions if somebody passes away somebody dies what happens do does our body pain but our soul is paining we feel so sad we feel so burdened we weep we cry right it's it's our emotions it's a part of our soul if we are you know we get a good job what happens the person who gave you the job didn't give you a job because you look good they gave the job because you're able to do the work so when you get a job you're excited you're happy wow i got the job that's again your emotions then you got your mind we the way we think the the things that we do our mind our will and our emotion that's our soul then we have our spirit now our spirit will live eternally when we die our spirit is what goes to heaven right our spirit this body is gone nothing is left the spirit if if we if we say you know we took look at a person and say what is your name your name is david okay david who are you 
You ask a person named David. Okay, David, who are you? David will say, I am from here. I'm from this family. I was brought up in this nation. And as I grew up, I grew up as a believer. I speak these languages. Yeah. That is his outward thing. But actually, David is spirit. He's a spirit being. Without the spirit, the body is of no use. What is a body? It's nothing. So Paul is writing here. He's saying, the Lord Jesus can touch us and transform us. The Holy Spirit can minister to us in our mind, that is our spirit, soul, and our body. How many of you, you, you know, you're singing, you're praying, you're worshiping God, and suddenly you feel a coolness in your body, or you feel a heat, just the fire of God coming upon you. It's God ministering. Or sometimes we are burdened and very sad, right? And you pray, and we, we, you know, we spend time in God's presence. Suddenly, you feel like you're only, you know, all the weight has gone off. You feel very light inside. But you may be the same weight physically. But inside, some weight, the burden is taken off. Right? The word weight, where has it gone off from? From the spirit. That pain, that hurt, or maybe unforgiveness that we are carrying, it's gone off, it's from the spirit. Right? And then God is also able to speak to us through our uh, mind and our will. He can speak to us right through the Holy Spirit. To be in Christ is to be born of him, to be immersed in him, to be in union with him, and to be one with him spiritually. Right? Everyone say one with Jesus. Sounds nice, no? Imagine, we are one with him. He's there. He's willing to listen to us. Jesus is, the, you know, the, the Holy Spirit is not going to force us to do something. He will not. But he's waiting. What does Jesus say? Ask, it will be given to you. You seek, and you will find. You knock, and the door will be open. So it's something that we have to do. He's done the work. But if we want to grow in union with him, learn to be good believers, strong believers, we have to do the work of spending time in his presence. Right? OK. Any questions? Any thoughts? Everyone understanding? You have a question? Yeah, just give the mic to. Uh, after we born, we have a Holy Spirit uh, in childhood or not? Oh, sorry. Can you repeat that? Oh. After we born. After we born. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. We have uh, Holy Spirit in childhood or not? No. So see, the Bible says we are born in sin, right? In the natural, we are born in sin. Do you teach a child how to lie? How can a three-year-old, four-year-old child lie? Lie is a sin? Did you take the chocolate? No, I didn't take. Who taught the child to lie? Nobody thought. The sin nature is there already. right? But when we become believers, that sin nature is removed. So, when, so to answer your question, when we are born, we are born in the natural spirit, the spirit that we have. Right. And not not the Holy Spirit. Is that okay? Okay. Right. Let's go to chapter 15. Um, uh, quite a few of this may be repeated, but let's look at it, right? We become new creatures in our spirit. So we talked about this. Our old self has gone away. We become new people. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 23. Yes, go ahead. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, soul, and body preserve blameless and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Right. Well, thank you. So I just saw this. Joseph has a question. The question is, the Holy, the Holy Spirit was made for us 
or we were made for the Holy Spirit. So uh, the Holy Spirit was not. Uh, so Joseph, to answer your question, the Holy Spirit was not made. God is the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says that before the creation of the world, God existed. Right. So the Holy Spirit was there from beginning. Genesis chapter one. Uh, what does what does it say? Let us make a man. Who's the us? If God is alone, who's the us? Right? So the Holy Spirit was there from the beginning, before the foundations of the world. God was there. The Holy Spirit was there. Right? OK. So 1 Thessalonians 5.23, now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and make your, make your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, right? So this verse reveals our tripart being. Everyone say three. Tripart, three, right? What is it? One, spirit, soul, and body. We have a spirit, we have a soul, and that we have a body. This is just a vessel, the body, three part. Each of us are spirit beings, each of us have a soul, and we live in a body. The soul includes our mind, our will, our emotions, our thinking, our reasoning, all of that. The body is the house we, that we live in, and the real person inside us is the spiritual being. Now, what does the verse say? May God, may the God of peace sanctify you completely. What is the word sanctify? Sanctified means, come on, we did this. Set apart, made holy, right? So basically the verse saying, may the God of peace make you holy in your three-part being, in your body, your spirit, and your soul. So we may ask the question, how can my soul be holy? Yes. Now, we are here. This imagination, our thinking, our, or, or our thoughts can go anywhere. Yes or no? Right? We can think of anything, but we can physically be in, a, in one place. Right? Why is it? And you learn more in temptations, and uh, you learn all of that. Why is it that good believers fall into temptation and they get into bondages? Why? They know they are believers. They know the Holy Spirit is inside. But the mind is very weak. What about people who are in drugs, people who are alcoholic, addicted to pornography, living a sexually immoral life? Why is it? They know it's wrong. But why they're not able to stop it? Because the mind is weak. The devil puts things in, in the mind. You watch this, nothing will happen. Later you ask forgiveness. Or you, you, you see this. Right? Nobody is there to see you. Or you do this. Nobody will know. It's a secret. I will not tell anybody. Now this is all the devil's work. Right? But the Bible says, the God of peace wants to make us whole, make us holy, not only in our, in our spirit, but in our thinking, in our body as well. How do we keep our my emotions, our soul holy? Think of the right things. Align our thinking to the word of God. When temptation comes, you say, no, I have the mind of Christ. The wisdom of God is formed inside me. I will not fall into this trap. Right? Temptations are in different stages. I don't want to go into that. But the more you allow it, it will go from stage one to stage two, stage three, stage four. And then there will be, uh, you know, we'll commit the sin. So in stage one itself, we need to rebuke it and throw it away. Right? So we can use this verse. No. God has said he wants me to be holy in my body, my spirit, and soul. So I will not fall into this temptation. I rebuke the things of the devil. In Jesus' name, I command the thoughts to get out of my body, get out of my mind. In Jesus' name. What are you doing? Speaking the word of God. 
you're declaring that you are not an old creation but you are a new creation Ephesians 4 22 and 24 and says that you put off concerning your former conduct the old man which grows corrupt according to deceitful lusts and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and you put on the new man which was created to God in true righteousness and holiness now this is where many believers fail I like that word put on and put off right how many of you have worn a jacket everyone have worn a jacket right so we get ready we look outside oh the weather's cold what do we do we put on the jacket we put it on you can't say jacket come on and it won't come on right we have to put on the jacket now during the day it becomes hot what do you say oh man it's getting hot we have to put off the jacket now i can't say oh it's hot it's hot it's hot and keep wearing the jacket whose fault is it my problem if you tell your friend hey, it's very hot no? then what will your friend say then take out your jacket simple now the bible here paul is talking even in colossians he writes about things that you have to put on and put off he says here you put on the things of god righteousness justification sanctification everything you put it on you wear it on yourself nobody nobody will come and put it on you you have to put it on in your daily walk of life then you put off things of the flesh anger jealousy pride lust of the eyes lust of the flesh things that are worldly things that can corrupt us can make us sin you take it off you're getting what i'm saying right you put on the things of god and put off the things of the flesh and that work we have to do right many believers you know why do we struggle with carnal thinking still living in fleshly uh, ways it is because we have not put off the things inside our spirit is new but we're still thinking our our reasoning when we look at people we get angry if somebody does something we have, there's unforgiveness why because we've not removed the old the old jacket has not been taken off and we're trying to put the new one but it's not fitting because the, still the old one is there so paul is saying you take off the old one put on the new jacket put on the things of god and when we do that now we'll talk more about this when we do that we will be walking in in holiness in our body spirit and soul right so shall we do that will we do that all of us right we may have certain areas of challenges certain areas of difficulties that we may be going through but god knows what you're going through right uh, whatever it is today you can go back to god and say god i don't want to keep wearing this old self help me to wear the new self my new jacket help me to put on you in my life we have to do that right all right all right so we'll stop here we will continue the next class thank you everyone thank you to the students online thank you for joining god bless